Hi, my name is John Considine, and I'm a scientist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Products Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin. And my job is to play with paper. And some of the activities that follow, you'll be doing some of the same things that I do with paper. I'm standing in the pilot plant at Forest Products Laboratory. The pilot plant is a miniaturized version of a pulp mill that gets the wood ready for paper making. Did you know that paper making is over 2,000 years old? In my opinion, paper is one of the greatest materials made by people. With paper, people were able to write stories, poetry, and histories. They developed methods of keeping track of days and seasons. Even as late as the 1500s, paper was a very expensive material. A reasonable sized book could cost more money than a person made in, the, in an entire year. A book was often the most treasured possession of a family. All that changed 200 years ago when two brothers invented a paper machine that could make rolls of paper instead of making paper one sheet at a time. Paper is made from a part of the wood called cellulose in the form of fibers. Every plant in the world that stands upright contains cellulose. Even some sea creatures have shells made from cellulose. In case you were wondering, Wood contains about 40% cellulose fibers. After taking all the bark off the wood, we remove all the gluey stuff that holds the wood together and leave the cellulose fibers that makes great paper. So why not use thin pieces of wood like paper? Because, as you can see, wood is too brittle. Wood makes a poor writing material because it isn't light and flexible, like paper. One of the activities you'll be doing is seeing how flexible different papers are. See? No breaking. I expect that you have a lot of experience with paper, from notebook paper to paper grocery sacks. We'd like you to play with different kinds of paper and explore their properties. Some papers made from hardwood trees, like aspen, have very short fibers less than one millimeter long. Other papers made from softwood trees, like pine trees, have long cellulose fibers, often over three millimeters long. Short fibers give a very smooth writing surface, while long fibers make a strong paper. Brown papers, like in grocery sacks or cardboard boxes, are some of the most common papers in the world. Nine out of 10 materials manufactured in the world spend some time in either a grocery sack or a cardboard box. Remember those 2,000 year old papers? Most of them only exist as small fragments now because paper gets weaker over time. Some white papers designed to make books today are designed to last many hundreds of years because they've been specially treated. But enough talking. Let's play with paper. Hi, my name is Angela and I work with the Materials Research Science and Engineering Center at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today I'm going to show you some experiments that you can do to play with paper and learn about its properties. We're going to do some activities that focus on texture, tearing, fiber orientation, and spreading. To get started, I'm going to show you uh, some materials that you're going to need. First, you're going to need some paper. So I found some things that I have at home. I found an old envelope a grocery sack from the last time I was at the store, a piece of notebook paper, some newspaper, and some wax paper that I found in the kitchen. Any other paper you have at home will be fine as well. I'm also going to show you some other materials that you're going to need. You will also need some food coloring, a small pipette, an eyedropper, or a straw that you can use to pinch and pick up water. You're gonna to wanna to get two small bowls or cups and fill them with some water, a pen or a pencil, a ruler, a pair of scissors, a crayon or an oil pastel. I have a hand lens to help me look closer at the paper, but that's optional. Once you have the supplies, we can get started. 
I'm gonna demonstrate on one or two pieces of paper, but I'll encourage you to go ahead and do the activities with each piece of paper. So first off, I'm gonna explore texture and tearing. I'm gonna feel what I notice about the paper and see how it feels. This one feels kind of smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and tear the paper in two directions. So with both hands, I'm gonna tear the long direction first. And then using two hands, I'm gonna go ahead and tear in the opposite direction. Notice if tearing feels the same in each direction and notice if they look any different. So here's a piece of newspaper that I tore earlier. And notice that it tore straight down in one direction, but it's a lot more jagged and at an angle in the other direction. So see what you notice about the other pieces of paper that you tear. This side tore a little bit straighter and this side was a little bit kind of more rough and jagged. I can also see more fibers along this side, along the torn edge. So using my hand lens, I'm gonna look at the fibers and estimate how long they are with my ruler and which direction most of them are pointing. You might find that different fibers tear differently. To keep track of my observations, I went ahead and used my pencil and I made some notes along each of my papers and along each side. So just go ahead and make note of how it, what you notice and how it feels. So next, we're going to use one of the smaller, go back to one of the smaller pieces of paper that I tore and use it for another experiment. I'm gonna cut out a rectangle with my scissors. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because some of your papers might look similar, uh, we're going to go ahead and give kind of a code to each, uh, to each of your papers. So I'm gonna label this uh, SP for sack paper right here on my little rectangle. And on the bottom left-hand corner of my paper, I'm also gonna label it SP right here. So next I'm gonna do an experiment with this little rectangle that I just cut. First, I want to carefully trace it at the bottom of my paper with my pencil. And I'm gonna write the word before above it. We're going to end up soaking little rectangles in the water, one from each of your papers for at least two hours and possibly overnight if you want, and then let them dry out. Once it's dry, you're gonna trace around it again and write the word after next to the before square. While it's soaking, you can think about our hypotheses and wonder what might happen to the paper after it's, so, uh, after it's been soaking and drying. Do you think it'll come out the same shape? Will it still be flat or maybe it'll be wrinkly? Think about what you have observed when paper gets spilled on or rained on. I'm just gonna set this aside for right now. I'm gonna put it in my water and come back to it later. Next, I'm gonna take a small container with a little bit of food coloring and add some water. I'm gonna add enough water until it's dark enough that I'll be able to see it when I put it on my different papers. You can use the pipette or a straw to mix it up. From here, I'm gonna do a couple experiments. First, I'm gonna start in the upper right corner and make a nice sized color drop. 
you will notice that the droplets behave differently on different papers. On the wax paper, it may just sit on top. Eventually it'll dry, but it doesn't really soak in. And many other papers, the droplet does soak in, some faster than others. Look what happens on the newsprint when it spreads in and soaks out fairly quickly. I'll show you a piece that I did earlier. Oop. Let me set this to the side. Look what happens on newsprint. When I make a droplet, it soaks and spreads fairly quickly on the newsprint. You might notice that it spreads in one direction faster than in another, and that the round droplet eventually becomes an oval here. Think about whether these observations about spreading of the droplet are connected to the paper tearing and the fiber observations that we did earlier. I'll set them aside for now, but once they're dry, I can come back with my ruler and my pencil and make observations. Here is one that I did earlier with my newsprint. I see that it is 50 millimeters long in this direction and 38 millimeters wide in this direction. Another experiment I can do use, use or do is use a pen or a pencil to feel when I draw what it feels like on the paper. So I'm gonna draw lines gently going up and down and side to side on each of my papers and notice what it feels like when I'm doing it. Does it feel the same or does it feel rougher in one direction than the other? How does the smoothness compare to different papers? Which one is the smoothest? Which one is the roughest? Make some notes about your observations on your paper. Next, I'm gonna take my crayon or oil pastel and I'm gonna make a shape. I might make a heart or a diamond and then I'm gonna put a droplet or two inside that shape and make some observations about what might happen. As it soaks and spreads, again, I'm gonna make observations and I'm gonna write what happens. Over here on this side of the paper, you're able to make your own free drawing and design and see what happens when you put the colored water inside. Once it's dry, I'm gonna come back and make some more observations and write it down. Did the crayon stop the color from spreading on the surface? Did the color soak underneath on some of the papers? Again, I'll write my observations. So here I'm gonna do my free drawing. And again, make a nice generous drop or two. Okay, now my rectangles have been soaking for a few hours. So I'm gonna take them out of the water and I'm gonna pat the excess water off of them. And I'm gonna set them aside. Oops, <laughs> I'm gonna set them in aside in a place where they can completely dry. Later, if they've, they've dried, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna trace around them and I'm gonna match up the codes that I had uh, with each rectangle next to the tracing from where it said before. I'm gonna trace the same rectangle after it's been soaking 
And then you're going to notice what do you observe from the two tracings? Has it gotten bigger? Has it gotten smaller? I can also go ahead and use my ruler for more accurate observations. We can also compare the rectangle to the original paper. Is it flat or wrinkled after soaking and after drying? Once I've done all of the experiments and all of my different papers, I'm going to gather them together to make a lab notebook about all of my different observations. I've made on all the different papers. So if you have paper clips, binder clips, something you can use at home to hold the papers together, it'll make a nice science notebook, again, with all of your observations recorded. So we learned all sorts of new things while playing with paper. We talked about uh, the activities of uh, texture, tearing, diffusion, and spreading. Uh, enjoy observing the world around you, and I hope you have enjoyed this activity. Thank you. Hello, I'm Paul Voiles, a professor of material science and engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and director of the Wisconsin Materials Research Science and Engineering Center. Material science and engineering is the study of stuff, the stuff that makes up our natural and built environments. Everything has to be made out of something and material scientists figure out what each thing should be made of. Like which metal alloy is best for the engine block of a car or which plastic is best for a recyclable soda bottle. We also make new stuff like better anodes and cathodes for higher capacity batteries and stronger fiber composites for the blades of wind turbines. The central idea of my field is the connection between a material structure, properties, and processing, and ultimately its engineering performance. Structure means what are a material's constituents parts and how are they arranged? For paper, that means what kind of fibers are there? How long are the fibers and how are they arranged? Are they aligned with each other or are they every which way? Properties means how does the material respond to its environment? Is it strong or weak under force? Does it conduct electricity or not? Is it magnetic? For paper, strength is important, but so is strength in different directions. Imagine the handles on a paper bag. They need to be strong against pulling along their length to hold the weight of what's in the bag, but their strength against twisting isn't as important. Processing means how a material is made. Is it melted, then poured into a mold like a metal, or extruded like a plastic? By controlling how a material is made, we control its structure and therefore its properties. Paper is formed from fibrous pulp made into sheets and then dried. How the pulp is pressed and dried controls how tightly the fibers are packed together, which controls how quickly ink or dye moves through the paper. We can also combine materials to achieve new properties, like adding a wax coating to make paper waterproof. Performance is how materials work as part of a product in the real world. Once it's cut or bent into shape, is it still strong enough? How long does it last under conditions like heat, water, or wind? Performance is where the science of materials meets engineering. I hope you enjoy this exploration of the material science of paper. The experiments are fun, and it's a great way to learn to think like a material scientist in terms of structure, properties, processing, and performance.